Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and I'm the author of True Path of the Ninja and True Ninja Traditions. Now we've got a really exciting video for you today because we've finally, finally solved a piece of ninja history. This is the ninja sword, the straight bladed, square guarded ninja sword. Was it real or was it myth? Well here's the true facts. By the end of this video you will know if it was or was not truly a sword used in Japan. So the argument at the minute is that this, the sword you've just seen, was introduced in the 1980s by Stephen Hayes through his works and was a misinterpretation by Dr. Hatsumi. I would like to say that is totally false. It's 100% false and I can prove that. So people have been posting me blogs. One was Don Rowley's blog and one was Stephen Hayes' blog. I've had a look at them and it seems to become a bit of a debate at the moment. So the Historical Ninjutsu Research team went out to find the truth and we've got it. So, at the moment, most people think this was introduced by Stephen Hayes and it was an introduction and that the sword itself never existed in history. Well, we've actually found it in history and we're going to show you that. Now, first of all, I'd like to go through some of the statements that are totally incorrect and I want to wipe these statements off the board because they are misleading people. And a quick message to everyone, whenever you put these statements up, please back it up with history or at least have the information there so people can check it. Okay, first of all, this statement by Don Rowling. Now, as you can see, Don is saying that this sword appears not to exist before 1980. So I'd like to show you something. This is from an old Japanese comic, and while highly stereotyped, you can see it is actually a square tsuba. Now, are you telling me Stephen Hayes influenced early Japanese comics? I don't think so. Now, the image I'm about to show you is from this book, Ninja Attack, and I think they've taken this from an old comic. If you can see, it's got a square-bladed, what appears to be a straight handle. I don't know where this image is from though, I'm not sure if it's a taken from an old one, but I'm sure I have seen a similar image and I think it was in one of Buffon's videos. So I'm showing that in popular culture the straight bladed or at least the square guard existed. Now have a look at this next picture, the resolution is not very good but you'll see as best you can. This is Fujita Seiko with not a straight bladed sword but he has the square tsuba guard. remember they are saying Stephen Hayes actually brought this sword. We know that the square bladed tsuba was in Japanese popular culture well before Stephen Hayes ever went to Japan. So that is straight away false and I'm going to show you the historical proof towards the end. Okay, the next quote by Don. The saying this sword like myself, I used to say this, uh, that it did not exist in history. Well, me and Yoshi have found some datable evidence that dates between 1744 and 1847 to prove the straight-bladed, square-guided sword existed. You'll see that in a moment. Right, the image you're about to see is from a book that the Historical Ninjutsu Research Team have gone to find. And we found the, some images and we went through them. At present, these pictures come from one of two documents but we can 100% guarantee that this document or these images come from either the year 1744 or 1847. Both predate Stephen Hayes, by the way, both of which predate the Meiji period and are in the Samurai period. Doesn't mean this is the first time they were made, this means the first time that we have found them recorded. So they probably have always existed, but they did definitely 100% exist within the Edo period, when the samurai were at large. So they are historical weapons without a shadow of a doubt. So have a look at these images, they're somewhere between them two dates, see what you think. Now, as you can see, the images appear on a couple of versions, so we want to make sure the artist didn't do just one version we got wrong. There are multiple versions, they are all straight bladed, all square. 
but they all appear to be used by Ashigaru. So that is foot soldiers, or lower level, that border of samurai Ashigaru. So what does this mean? This means that the straight bladed, square guarded sword absolutely 100% without a shadow of doubt existed in the Edo period. It is more than likely, unless other evidence shows itself, that it was used by the foot soldiers. It appears to be a foot soldier type sword. However, we are looking for other references at the moment. Now, I want to be 100% clear on this. This does not connect it to the ninja. What this proves is that Stephen Hayes did not get it wrong. It also says, because Don Rowley says Hatsumi never said this, he's checked with Japanese shihans, he's checked with everything, that um, Hatsumi has never mentioned the straight bladed sword and he doesn't claim it to exist or something like that. This means that either Don is wrong and Hatsumi did not say that, or Hatsumi has no understanding of this type of sword or antique swords, because I didn't have to look far for this. So either Don is wrong or Hatsumi is wrong. Which one is up to you? But the one thing that is correct is that it did exist and Stephen Hayes is not in the wrong. So, what does this mean for the ninja? I want to be 10,000 times clear on this. This does not mean it's a ninja sword, okay? There is no such thing as the specific generated ninja sword. There are swords ninjas used. But what this does mean is that if you discuss the other arguments we talked about, Ninpei or Arashigaru were of a much higher percentage than samurai. So what that means, or fully blown samurai. So what that means is that most of your shinobi would probably come from the foot soldier class and from the samurai class. But what it means is you have some shinobi who are foot soldiers and some foot soldiers use this straight bladed square sword. So only by logic itself, if a foot soldier or samurai is using this type of sword and he's ninja trained, he may take it with him. That is one place where this image may have come from. Nobody knows. What it does mean is the sword existed and if a ninja owned one of these swords, he could have used it. So, this next statement by Don is also incorrect. So it is not safe to say this. In fact, it's not safe to say this by any means. It is now probable that the ninja did use a straight bladed square guarded sword but it is not fact that that is a ninja sword 100 percent ninja sword did not exist swords used by the ninja did please get that right through all our research we've come up with a list of things that would be modifications for a ninja sword and hear what they are and they've taken from all our sources so far a ninja sword would be any sword you like, preferably a shorter sword, an Owakazashi, but that's only from one example. But however, the shorter blade. It would or could have a hole in the end of the scabbard, so when you're swimming you can come up, take a breath, put your scabbard back and carry on swimming. It is not for standing there like this, that is incorrect. Also, a sword used by a ninja would probably have a longer cord. This was so you could reach a higher and pull it up or use it to tie things around. Now, for those who've seen the review of my book by Dean, Dean mentions this next bit, which is a leather tsuba. That's the hilt cross-section. Now, unfortunately, Dean says he feels this is incorrect. However, I, Dean is semi-correct here. What Dean says is when you put the guard in and it's all correct and you shake it, it's the blade that makes a sound. He is correct, yes. However, you have to then presume all shinobi were using brand new swords or well-maintained new swords. So I went back to some historical records and we found a record saying a samurai had his sword. Actually, all of the wrapping had come off. Everything was moving around. In fact, he ended up wrapping vines around it or trying to wrap vines around it because everything was falling to pieces on campaign. So it is a hundred percent. The Katori Centauri you say you put leather on it and it is totally logical seeing as you'd have to have a well maintained brand new sword for it not to rattle. We've all grabbed antique swords or those seen you shake it and the thing rattles all over. So they made them out of leather. This is a, an oral tradition by Katori Centauri.
So all them accumulated together, all one of them would class as a shinobi sword. But there's no such thing as a shinobi sword. It's just a sword that our ninja uses to help him along his way. So to conclude, guys, we have to remember Stephen Hayes is A, not incorrect. He did not do it. Either Don Rowley or Hatsumi is incorrect in that blog or statement, and I will put the blog down here. Either Don is wrong and Hatsumi did not say that, and Don is lying, or Hatsumi did say that and he doesn't understand historical weaponry because it was not difficult to find. On top of that, the shinobi may well have used straight-bladed, square-guarded swords, but not all of them. So, there you go, the truth behind the ninja sword, the historical fact. Now, the historical ninjutsu research team is here to bring these facts, so any more questions, bring them on. Finally, out of interest, if anybody wants to own their own copy of the handwritten Shonen Kit or Nimpiden, we've now put them on Amazon. They're coming up by March. The Shonen is on there now, the Nimpiden will be on in March. So have a look. Uh, here's the two covers. They're beautiful, done by Jason Kane. And if you want to own a real ninja manual written by the real shinobi back then, with their handwriting, off you go and have a look at Amazon. It's the first time they've been available to the English world through English Amazon. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Get this information out there so people are not misrepresenting ninjutsu. See you next time.